Damn, son, where'd you find this?
On Sasami live on KEXP, a new album called Sasami out on Domino Records just last month. It's so fun to hear you playing these new songs. Thank you. Thank you so much You're for coming. You're looking great, by the way. Thank you. I look like I could join your band, don't I? Please do. Wearing a Sasami cape. If you come out to their show at the Doug Fur tonight or Barboza tomorrow in Vancouver the next night, you can see them in their beautiful resplendent red. And maybe I'll be with them. Who knows? I hope so. <laughs> We're so glad you're here today. Obviously, music runs in your family. Sasami, you've been here in the KEXP studios before. Your brother yeah. has been here with his yeah, band Froth. At least once, I think. Yeah. yeah, they have a new album out as well. So Or soon, in yes, June. I think. It's soon. Yeah, we're still playing, or we're playing one song from it now. Nice. But, um, We've got a Gemini record. Oh. Mine is very obviously a Pisces. <laughs> Am I right, everybody? <laughs> I love it. Well, obviously, you grew up listening to and playing music, mostly classical for you. I know you even studied classical music in college. Tell yeah. me a little bit about your musical background. You've pretty much been making music your entire life. Yeah, I studied uh, piano like a good young Korean girl, and then I studied French horn. That's actually what the song Callous is about when I was in middle school carrying around the large case. Callous is... As far as the eye can see. I bet it was when you were young. It was probably bigger than you. Yeah, it was <laughs> Hauling huge. around this big French horn. Why French horn? I don't know, because I guess I've just been like a little weird since always. <laughs> Speaking of which, your songs are pretty serious on this record. Whenever I've seen you live, you're pretty silly. And uh, <laughs> Me? <laughs> silly? <laughs> oh, Cheryl. But you're clearly getting out some emotions in your record. I've heard that the lyrics for you come like kind of at a first pass and where you really tinker and spend a lot of time is in the studio. Mm -hmm. And did you record this direct to tape? Yeah, this was recorded on a 16-track tape machine. I was recording um, all the songs pretty much well. Actually, all the songs when I was on tour like intermittently over a year. And I just liked the restriction of recording on tape. You can't like playlist a million takes. You have to just like commit and either record over something or keep it. And I think that's kind of magical and special. How much do you feel like you balanced recording over it or keeping it? Um, I don't know. I did a lot of my homework like in the van on my iPad preparing the arrangement. So by the time I got in there, I was like ready to go. So yeah, I feel like once we, I, th I think there was a lot of like first takes that were kept. That's cool because that is sort of like the perfect marriage of uh, technology that you could actually be making right. a record on your <laughs> iPad on tour with Jerry Glazer right. and then come to the studio and use an analog format and have it mostly figured out. Yeah, definitely. Introduce your band because you all sound amazing. Thank you. This is Adrian Young on the bass. <laughs> Clapping track. Zoe Brusher on the drums. And Cheryl Waters in my cake. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. You've created um, an amazing support system around yourself. You talk a lot about the tight-knit community that you have um, in, in your friends, but many of them in the music community. Can you talk a little bit about how you support one another? Yeah. I mean, I think that um, I like deeply believe in affirmative action in every sense of the term, even in um, in supporting women and non-binary artists and people in the music industry in general. And I've been a very lucky recipient of a lot of other people's similar philosophies. And, um, and yeah, I don't know. I just have been really lucky to be brought on tour by like my friends who are more successful, even when I didn't have music out just because they wanted to, because they believed in me and wanted to help me. And yeah, I hope I can do the same as I grow and can 
invite bands to come on tour with me and stuff like that. You've definitely worked with a lot of musicians. I know that we, I, I said somewhat jokingly, but I was being honest that you've been making music your entire life, but you went to school for music. Mm -hmm. um, you were- Brahms. A, a, oh. You know. Okay. Classical music. Big part of your life. French horn player, you know. Showing her tattoos. The classics. <laughs> But you also were an educator, you were a teacher for a while, and you've worked on a ton of people's records, both as a band and in the studio. So I imagine there's a lot of people that you can draw on to help you with your records as well. What was the studio experience like and who, who came by? Well, um, Juju was a huge part of it because when I was studying classical music, Juju was like living in Echo Park and being in a rock band. You know, he's the youngest of four and I'm the oldest of four. So when I came back from school, he was like, I live in Echo Park, I'm in a band. I was like, okay. But actually he's like such a studious rock musician. He's like really obsessed with like analog technology and like getting guitar tone stuff. So he was kind of a cheat code for me. When I started playing in rock bands, he was like kind of shaming me into writing better chords and using better gear and stuff. So I was really lucky to have him in the studio. Um, and when I wrote the songs, because I wrote all the parts, but like I couldn't play them as well, and Juju's such a good guitar player, so now I feel like I'm, I'm, I feel like I can play them okay. But when I wrote them, I, it was kind of like a guitar etude. Like I wanted to write parts that were, even if they're above my ability, that like kind of met my musical goal. Mm -hmm. So I was really lucky to have Juju play guitar on a lot of it, and then our friend Thomas, who owns the studio. Um, who recorded the Froth Records. He was engineering and producing with us. And then um, Sheridan Riley, who's my friend who plays in Always, um, she was in town and played drums. And um, Cam from Froth played drums on it. And then, like, Meg Duffy from uh, Hand Habits came and played guitar. And, like, so good. living in L.A. right now, there's so many musicians from, like, all over the world living there. So it was kind of one of those things where I was like, hey, Devendra, you want to come over today right now? And he was like, sure. Oh, it like that like kind of stuff. So it was, it was, it's a magical time to be in L.A. for sure. And it sounded like it was so fun making the record. Definitely. Well, you're busy now out on the road. I mean, as if you weren't busy enough before. Mm -hmm. I love the way you talk a lot in interviews about how music is a job. And it's a very real way of talking about mm -hmm. it. And, you know, you have to work because you have to pay your bills. And you... Yeah. That's great with you. You're, you're, I love to work. I'm lucky, and I think that um, I think that pretty much everyone who does well in the music world works hard. So that's like kind of the key ingredient is just kind of working really, really hard. And I just happen to be lucky that I have a hundred thousand dollars of student debt, lighting a fire under my butt. That helps too. I imagine it does. <laughs> well, Sasami is playing tomorrow night at Barbosa. Tonight at the Doug Fur, if you're in Portland, come on out and see them. They sound amazing. A couple more songs? Yeah, I would be honored. Honored. And I'll just stand over here in my beautiful cape. Thank you so much. Shout out to my friend Akina for making it. Thank you, Akina. <laughs>
Good. Thank you. That song's called Free from the New Album from Sasami. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. It's and I hope to see you in Seattle at the show. Yeah, that's tomorrow night at Barbosa. And they're going to head back down to Portland. Going to be playing the Doug for tonight. You already thinking about another record? I definitely am. Good yeah, news for I've, us. I, I mean, it's. You know that song by Wise Blood called Wild Time? I definitely do. It is a wild time. I feel like music is really electric right now. I'm like really excited to get back in the studio. It's an inspiring time to be alive. That's a great frame of mind to be in. I to think be on with tour. chaos, there's also this kind of like electricity circulating around the world right now. So I'm trying to bottle it up. Exciting. On a reel to reel analog style. Uh, you got to come out and see Sasami again tonight at the Doug Fur in Portland, tomorrow at Barboza. Great to have you all here. Thank you. Wait, Gerald, do you play any instruments? Um, you know, I can play chords on a guitar around the campfire. Okay. And, uh, if yeah. I bring a campfire, will you play at the show with us tomorrow? Oh, that's a thought. I don't know. <laughs> Boy, I haven't picked up my guitar in a while. <laughs> if anyone could talk me into it, though, it's probably you. Amazing. Okay, someday. <laughs> collab something to look forward to maybe that next album you can come down to i'll come down to la and just stop by the studio we'll see what we can come up with when you can do, di- wait no you can't dial the knobs later on analog can you you can mm. you can like re- you can you can do some stuff all right we could make some cheryl magic i would be honored that'd be, that'd be amazing all right something to think about you're listening to sasami here on kexp seattle thank you thank you that was great Discover new music at listener-powered kexp.org. Damn, son, where'd you find this?